Joining me now, Senator Bernie Sanders, independent from Vermont and a member of the Budget Committee. Senator, always good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. You have been critical of the cuts that the uh, Republicans have made because they don't include big changes to military spending. Is the cost of war a reason to get out? Well, it's one of the reasons to get out. In addition to that, we have been in Afghanistan for 10 years. And at the end of the day, it is going to be the people of Afghanistan and their military who are going to defeat the Taliban and not U.S. troops. So we have to continue our commitment to helping the Afghan military. But I think with a $1.5 trillion deficit, spending about $100 billion every single year on the war in Afghanistan, now is the time to accelerate the departure of our troops. Uh, what we're doing now in Afghanistan to a significant degree is nation building. Well, I would prefer to rebuild the United States of America, our infrastructure, our energy system, rather than Afghanistan. So I do believe that we can make significant cuts in spending and bring our troops home a lot sooner than the president is talking about. But as you know, the argument is that without helping them at this critical juncture, we could see a severe return to the problems that we saw in Afghanistan. In the first uh, place, there are very, lots of concerns about the threat to our national security. Of course, Robert Gates right now is in Afghanistan saying goodbye to the troops. Let me play for you, Senator, just a little bit of what he said. If it were up to me, I'd leave the shooters to last. Nobody wants to uh, give up the gains that have been won at such a hard uh, cost. And nobody wants to give our allies the excuse to run for the exits. So how do you cut the costs and, and obviously the drain on the U.S. budget and still not back off on the gains that have been made? Well, Chris, no one is suggesting that you're going to bring all the troops home tomorrow. But we are spending tens of billions of dollars, not just on military activity, but on nation building as well. So I think after 10 years, after huge expense, we can accelerate the departure of our troops, continue to support the Afghan military, give them all the help that they need to take on the Taliban. But I think 10 years is enough. It's time to bring the troops home. Of course, this is just one part of the larger conversation about reducing the deficit. And you've said you'd only support a deal that includes shared sacrifice. And I know you know the Republican argument very well. The rich need tax breaks if they're going to higher. Uh, they don't buy the counter argument right. that the rich are already making record profits. So when you hear this back and forth, and I've been asking these questions, it seems like for months now from both sides, how do you get this thing solved? Well, first of all, when you have the wealthiest people in this country doing phenomenally well, when the top 1% earns more income than the bottom 50 percent and in recent years almost all of the new income created in America has gone to the very wealthy while at the same time their effective tax rate is the lowest on record it is totally insane not to be asking the wealthiest people corporations that are very very profitable and are paying nothing in taxes to contribute to deficit reduction what the republicans are saying is not only do they not want the wealthy and large corporations to pay any more, they want to give them a trillion dollars in tax break, tax breaks at the same time as they decimate Medicare, Medicaid, education, infrastructure, and the needs of working families. I think that is pretty crazy. I think it is way out of line in terms of what the average American believes. People believe in shared sacrifice. Everybody has got to play a role, not just working families and low-income people. So uh, what I am worried about right now is not just what the Republicans are saying. I want to see the president and the Democratic leadership do what the American people want, and that is shared sacrifice. Corporate America, the wealthy, have also got to contribute in terms of deficit reduction. And let me ask you very quickly about one of the drains on all American households, pretty much, and that's rising gas prices. I know you're planning to introduce legislation that would curb speculating on crude oil markets in, in very layman's terms. How does this help? Right now, up to 40% of the cost of a gallon of gas has nothing to do with supply and demand. Everything to do with the fact that 80% of the oil futures market is controlled by financial institutions who never use the product. They're involved in speculation and in making huge profits, which they have for the last few months. We want to limit the role of speculators, and when you do that, I believe you're going to significantly uh, reduce the price of a barrel of oil. Senator Bernie Sanders, good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you. It is exactly the economic debate.